Okay, so we're going to be talking about quotient of powers. And what does quotient mean? Division. Good. So basically, it's just the dividing of your powers. So if you want to write dividing up in the top with parentheses, it's perfectly fine. Okay, if we have a problem like 2 to the 7th power and we're dividing it by 2 to the 4th power, if we write this out longhand, so if we decide to write 2 to the 7th power in its expanded format, that would just be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. I know, it's a lot of 2s, 7 to be exact. And then underneath it, you've got 2 to the 4th in expanded form. That's just 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Now, if I were to want to simplify this idea, every multiplication of 2 that I have on the top, it can be simplified by a multiplication of 2 on the bottom. So that means I can cancel these 2s out how many times? Four of them, right? I've got seven of them on top, but I've got four of them on the bottom. So all four of them on the bottom can actually be like canceled or simplified by one of the twos on the top. Now, since everything has disappeared from the bottom, what actually still remains? A one. A one still remains. Don't say it's a zero. A zero does not remain. Okay. You cannot have a denominator of zero. Actually, when we get into our functions unit next semester, you're going to learn about how if you have a zero in your denominator, <coughs> that actually creates an undefined value, an error. So you'll learn it when we get into slope and talking about functions that anything with a denominator of zero is an undefined value. So you can't have it, but what does exist, because it even if so, if I were to multiply by zero, that would change my value, wouldn't it? These will no longer be 2 to the 4th. It would actually just be a 0. Okay, so it's actually just an imaginary 1 that we can go ahead and write in there because if we multiply by 1, it does not change a value. So if everything cancels out, that means there's still a 1 remaining. A 1 is still present. So what do I still have present on the top? Three twos, right? So 2 to the 3rd power. And at the bottom, I still have a value of 1. But I don't have to write 2 to the 3rd power over 1. I could just write it as 2 to the 3rd power, and then I'd be done. Of course, then I could simplify it all out, and I'd get 8. Okay? So, same idea. Let's say it was reversed. Let's say it was 2 to the 4th power on the top and 2 to the 7th power on the bottom. The reverse would also still be true. We would have... Please don't do it. You're going you're gonna, to, like... I see you guys panicking to get your colors. It's going to drive me nuts. We'd have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 on the top. All of it over 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 on the bottom, right? Seven of them. Okay, so all of those written there, again, we could cancel them out four times. But now everything's been canceled from the top. So what automatically remains? A one. So it's really like a times one on the top. So this would become one over two to the third power. Okay, and just like two to the third power was equal to eight, one over two to the third power would be equal to one over eight. Okay, but it just gives you an idea of what's happening here. So just like with product of powers, we added our exponents. What is quotient of power having us do? Subtracting. Subtracting them. Good. So let's write that rule down. So for our rule, when dividing powers of identical bases, because remember, it also has to be that the bases are identical in order for you to follow this rule. So when dividing powers of identical bases, you subtract the exponents. If you're dividing powers of identical bases, you're really just going to subtract the exponents. 
So flashcard, this is a flashcard item. You need to know what the flashcard rule would look like. The front of your card, my recommendation always is to put down what's the rule called. So the title of the rule, quotient of powers. What does the setup look like? The setup would be x to the m power over x to the n power. And then the back of your card. On the back of the card, you would just write x to the m minus n. So make sure you get that set up for your flashcards. All right, simplify. Again, simplify means solve it as far as you possibly can. So if you're stuck with some numbers, solve it. Okay. So if I were to give you negative seven, notice I'm putting those inside parentheses, negative seven's inside parentheses, negative seven to the ninth power divided by negative seven to the sixth power. Because of the fact that they are the same base, they are identical bases. They both are identical bases. I'm just going to be focusing on their exponent. Just focusing on the 9 and the 6. So the base is still going to stay the same. The base is going to stay a negative 7. I do need to put that negative 7 inside of parentheses. The only thing that's going to be changed is that nine and that six, I'm just going to subtract them. And that's going to give me negative seven to the third power. Now, because of the fact that these are just numbers, I can go ahead and work that out. Negative seven to the third power is just gonna give me negative 343. Why don't you guys try number two on your own? Jayla, what's that going to give us? X to the second power or X squared. You can say it either way, but yes, you guys need to make sure that you know how to say them correctly, okay? So the bases happen to be the same here. They both happen to be a value of X. And so we just have to focus on these exponents. So our base is going to remain an X. Our exponents are going to just do, go ahead and be subtracted, 8 minus 6, and that's going to give to us x to the second power or x squared. Okay? All right, if I give you 72 x to the fourth y to the fifth over 3 x why? So just like with the multiplication, you focus on the numbers first. You're going to do the same thing here for division. You want to focus on these numbers. So right now we've got the number 72. Does that have the exponent? Yes. It's a 1. And then we've got a 3. What's the exponent for the 3? A 1. Are these the same bases? No, but can we do 72 divided by 3? 
Absolutely. We can simplify 72 over 3. What is that going to give us? 24. Okay. So remember, you only subtract exponents if the bases are the same. Some people in last period were thinking that we had to subtract the 72 and the 3. Not in this specific example, but something like this on their homework. They thought, well, don't I need to subtract them? No, you only subtract exponents. If it's a number, it's a division problem first and foremost. It is a division problem. So you do your division like you know how to. So when we get into those variables, which we don't know the value of it, that's when we're trying to simplify it down to where it's one representation of that variable raised to one power, not several representations, okay? So moving on to the next set that we do know, We've got x to the fourth over x. Okay, so this is now going to become x to the four minus what? One. Minus one. Because there isn't an exponent written, we know it's a power of one. x to the four minus one power is going to give us x to the third. Okay, then we move on to the y's. So we know it's division, so I know I need to subtract my exponent. So it becomes y to the 5 minus what? 1. Okay, that's going to become y to the 4th power. So then if I just piece it all together, that's just going to equal 24 x to the 3rd, y to the 4th. All right, can I move on to the next page? All right, let's say that we have six a to the eighth, d to the fifth over eight a to the tenth, d to the fourth. Again, we just want to go ahead and focus on separating them out as individual components. So let's start here. Are these the same bases? No, these are not the same bases. So we have 6 over 8. Can I simplify that to a whole number? No, but it is able to be simplified, isn't it? 6 over 8 can simplify to what? 3 over 4. We're not going to do decimal forms. We're going to leave them in fraction form for a specific reason, and you'll understand in just a moment. If we move on to the next component, the A's. For the A's, we have A to the 8th over A to the 10th. Now, in the previous examples, the larger exponent was where? On the top. In this case, the larger exponent happens to now be on the bottom. You can still subtract them, but that means that your final answer has to go to the bottom. Because if I were to go ahead and write this out, and yes, I'm going to show it to you longhand, it would be eight A's on the top. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight over... 10 A's on the bottom, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
that means all these A's right here are going to go ahead and cancel each other out. The eight A's that were on the top are being canceled out by eight of the A's that are on the bottom, but I'm still left with two A's on the bottom. So yeah, I am subtracting them, but you'll notice when, if I subtract them, eight minus 10, I get a what? A negative two. So we're going to get into the negative exponents in a couple of days. But for the time being, just note that right now, if your bottom half is heavier, then your answer needs to stay on the bottom. So a to the eighth over a to the tenth is actually going to simplify to, if all of them cancel out on top, what do I put? A one. It simplifies to a one over how many a's were left on the bottom? Two of them. So a to the second. I'm still subtracting them, but because my bottom half was heavier or bigger, I'm leaving the remainder on the bottom. Does that make sense to you guys? Fantastic. All right, let's go on and take a look at this part. D to the fifth and D to the fourth. So which one's heavier, top or bottom? Top. So my answer is going to stay at the top. This will become D to what power? the one or the first, d to the first power over, since I have all these fractions, I need to put it over what? One. Now I can start to combine this together through multiplication. What is three times one? Three, and then three times d to the first is just three d. If you wanna put d to the first, it's perfectly fine but all of this is just gonna get pieced together. Three times one times D to the first is three D. Then at the bottom, you've got four times A to the second times one. That's just gonna be four A to the second. And that's your final answer. I want you to try these on your own. Bless you. Hmm? They need to be simplified all the way, yeah.
All right, who can tell me what they got for problem number five? Simplified all the way. Alicia? 27. Very good. So the first thing that I would do in a situation like this, because you've got multiplication and you've got division, go ahead and simplify it so it's just a single value in the numerator and a single value to work with in the denominator. Right now, you've got multiplication that you're dealing with in the numerator. So I would simplify this out first. So this is a product rule. That means what do we have to do with these exponents? If it's a product rule, we have to what, Connor? Add them. So this becomes 3 to the 4 plus 2 power over 3 to the 3rd, which is now 3 to the 6th power over 3 to the 3rd. Once you've done that, you now have the quotient rule. So this becomes 3 to the 6 minus 3 power, which is 3 to the 3rd. And then you can simplify 3 to the 3rd. 3 times 3 times 3 will give you 27. And then you're done. What about for problem number 6? Connor? A to the 7th power is correct. So again, each of these is simplified out to a single numerator and a single denominator. You just happen to have two of them. So the first thing I would do, or there's several things you could do. You could either multiply the numerators first and then multiply the denominators and then divide, or you could divide each of these first and then multiply. It doesn't matter which one you choose to do first. For me, I went ahead and did division first. So I did a to the 10 minus 6 power, which gave me a to the 4th. Then I did a to the 7 minus 4 power, which gives me a to the 3rd. And then multiplying them meant that I just needed to add those exponents. So it became a to the 4 plus 3 power, or a to the 7th power. All right, and then the last one, number seven. Who wants to give that one a go? Ethan? So close, not y to the fifth, but it's y to the sixth. Two and eight, y to the sixth, but very, very good. Okay, so again, breaking this down, the four and the nine, they don't have exponents, they're not the same base, and they cannot be simplified. So it stays 4 over 9. Then you focus on the x to the third over the x. x to the third over x to the first. The top part is heavier, so that means when you subtract them, it's going to remain on the top. x to the second, but because this is a fraction, I know I have to put it over 1. Then we move on to the y's. y to the second over y to the eighth. The bottom is heavier, which means my numerator is going to be a one. And when I subtract those, the remaining is a six. So I get y to the sixth power. Then the last part, my z's. z to the fifth over z to the second. The top part is heavier, which means my denominator is going to be a 1. And I, my numerator, when I subtract those, is going to be z to the third power. Then I just focus on combining it all together. Multiply my numbers. 4 times 1 is just going to give me 4. Then I fill in my variables. x to the second. Y, or sorry, not y. z to the third. All of it over 9 times 1 times 1 is just 9 and then y to the 6, and then you're done. That's it. You just have to work through everything little by little. Separate them out. It really does help when you break the whole thing up into separate components. All right, you do have homework tonight.